which we've had several. Oh, there's Carol. Okay, you can go live anyways. Okay, uh, we are live and just waiting for our audience to populate the room. Okay. Hello, Carol. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Do you, are you starting right now? Uh, yeah, we're we are live. Okay. And I guess uh, we have enough uh, folks. Charlie Lovasetti may may come in. Hopefully, our new member. Um, I don't know where Dan is, but. He's late sometimes, so uh, why don't we get this uh, meeting going? Uh, let me bring this meeting to order. This is the July 5th, 2022 Newburyport Conservation Commission meeting taking place on the Zoom platform. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Joe, Dan said he's not coming. Dan said he's not coming. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He said that before. All right. Never mind. But I thought most recently when Julie uh, emailed him, he said he'd call in. Yes, but but uh, yeah, he we found out that he didn't really need to. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, no, Dan, we'll go. And uh, the first item are the uh, approval of the meeting minutes, June twenty first, twenty twenty two. Anybody got any comments or changes or? Yeah, we didn't meet. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, that's June 21. No, yeah, June 21. All right. yeah. yeah, we didn't meet, did we? And we took, the, so we the doing, June 7th meeting. So the June 7th, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm reading off the, uh, directly off the uh, agenda. So June 7th meeting, any comments, questions, changes? Oh. Joe, I'm sorry, this is Andy. I assume that's just the Scrivener's error typo. Yeah, there's a typo on the uh, yeah the roughest of the seven. Yep. Okay. Yeah, should be the seven. Um, motion okay. to approve. Second. All right, uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Carol Wagon. Wasn't he, wasn't there? I don't think I can. Um, okay. Uh, can I? I think I think you can. Um, okay, but, I approve uh, them. They sounded good. Okay, uh, David. Uh, yes. Okay, and I vote yes. And uh, I would like to officially welcome Charles Olovasetti to his first uh, meeting here at the Conservation Commission. Welcome, Char Charles. Charlie. Thank you. Welcome, hi everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. All right. Let's. Uh, Let's go on. Uh, next item are the uh, uh, Plum Island updates. Uh, the only Plum Island update that I'm aware of is that the Army Corps put out their um, request for bids and apparently they got two bids that were within the, uh, the range that they were willing to pay for. So, um, so it looks That's like- That's good news. Yeah, looks like something will be happening. Um, I think it's possibly in September. I'm not. Uh, I'm not positive on the, the start date right now. Um, the, the newspaper article seemed to indicate some kind of rock work was doing. I assume that's just false. I think that that was the rock work that was done months ago. Yeah, I, I would have guessed that too. Yeah, I, I saw that, um, and I was confused about it. But I don't know if they repositioned rocks or or what, but. Oh, there's a lot. There were a lot of rocks that were put out there when the emergency measures were taken a couple of months ago, and I look right. like the same rocks. Who knows? Maybe they were. I don't think I haven't heard anything about new rocks going in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And we do have Dan Warshall with us, coming coming to us from vacation. Hi, Dan. 
Hello, how you doing? Good. I had to rotate. Sorry about that. That's okay. Dan, meet uh, Charlie Alvacetti. Alvacetti, sorry. I'll get that right, Charlie. That's Our new member. Way. How are you? Good to be out. Good, thank you. Okay. Uh, so what, what we're going to do tonight, um, we're going to move the uh, city of Newburyport central waterfront improvements discussion to the end. Uh, and uh, we're going to have uh, Newburyport development uh, discuss uh, Browns Wharf uh, Tuscan Grill uh, situation. Uh, who do we have? Paul Avery. Yes, I am here as is um, Chris, I believe. I can't really tell, but I assume he is. Yes, Chris Skiba is, is uh, here too. Um, Paul, uh, this is Andy. Uh, what visuals did you want to speak to? I mean, I, I, have I, can, a I can pull up an ortho photo. So. Sure, no, I've got a couple of them here and I've got a, I've got a deck here. I can just oh. you know, go through quickly if that's helpful. Um, if I can join. Yeah, us. just one moment. Okay. Um, why don't I share screen if I can? Okay. Uh, Andy, Chris Skiba has his hand up too. All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so we have two, you know, ortho photos here, you know, before and after <clears throat> the one on the top just came right from the city GIS. And then the one on the bottom is the current condition. Um, so what you can see here is that, um, you know, the wharf itself has remained unchanged. The surface that uh, has been used for boat storage is, you know, it was boat storage season when the top photograph was taken has been just resurfaced as a white stone that's been placed down and uh, a series of picnic tables <clears throat> with umbrellas have been have been put out um, with the idea of some, um, you know, seasonal outdoor dining. Um, there are two portable structures that are also in place. This one right here, if you can see my hand is like a little food truck and I've got some other pictures of it that has been connected with utilities that have been laid on the ground um, to the Tuscan Grill property. And then this here is, is a shipping container, um, which uh, has been is serving as, as a bar. So, you know, the furniture is the picnic tables, you know, with some Adirondack chairs and it's still getting organized at this point, but there's some high tops and that type of thing. No worth moving activities have taken place. It's just resurfacing it with some stone that's been placed and, you know, putting out the furniture. Um, this here uh, is, you know, another aerial image of the same thing, a little closer up now, more perspective. There's the food truck. There's the container with the bar. Here are the, uh, the picnic tables, Adirondack chairs. You know, there's some barrels here. And then <clears throat> these are, um, there's string lights here. They're held up on posts that are in, in, in planter buckets. Um, so here's a ground shot. Another ground shot, this shows here, you know, here's the container, that's the bar. And then this is the food truck uh, over here. Here are the light poles that are, as I said before, in the planter buckets with the string lights on them and some barrels. Um, and another photograph here. Um, and then lastly, what I have is just a site plan. I don't know if you want to get into this, be happy to do if you want, but we did file a notice of intent, talk with Julia about this. Um, we filed it on Friday, just, you know, covered the basis. Would this have been an RDA or not? We just did the NOI, um, because, you know, eager to, you know, get occupancy, uh, assuming this is can get approved. Uh, sooner than later and rather risk the positive determination and lose a couple weeks, you know, to then having to go back and file the NOI. We just, you know, took the conservative approach, filed the NOI, it went on on Friday morning and presumably we were on the agenda in two weeks. And um, that's it. I can go back through the visuals. I don't know, Chris, if you've got anything you wanted to add or um, be there. Um, 
Yeah, I guess I wanted to mention Amy Scarpello is uh, from Tuscan, I believe, is also on. Uh, yep. And okay. she, so if there are any right operational on. questions, um, you know, Amy could answer any of those operational questions. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess um, appreciate the, the, the update here, but you, you filed a notice of intent. So, um, you know, I guess we're going to be spending some time looking at, uh, at all of that too. Um, I don't know if uh, anybody else from the commission has uh, some questions before we take a look at that or not. Um, I, I had asked earlier about the, uh, uh, even though it's not within our actual jurisdiction, however, the question about the chapter 91 approval and uh, I was hoping to look at that and get a better understanding whether you have approval to do this. Um, this is Chris. Our, our attorneys have looked at that and um, they can provide uh, something for that. They, they have evaluated that it is in compliance. Uh, and again, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know the specifics around it, but we can put something together for that. Um, based on their review. Okay. Yeah, and then in the notice of intent, I assume would be forwarded to, well, it will be forwarded to DEP and they probably will send it to Waterways. And so it would probably be a good idea to send such information to them as well to expedite this. I think they usually do some, some kind of cover letter when they do that, uh, describe it. The DEP went to, you know, Wilmington like it normally does. And um, the it also NHESP is getting a copy too. I mean, that's a completely different topic just because the if you look at the way the line is drawn, the, the habitat extends landward, which I just think is a, you know, macro level mapping error or whatever. But, you know, regardless, we just, we sent it into them. So, uh -huh. okay. okay. Yep. Uh were there any so drainage we'll changes? Be able made? to get those documents as well, the uh, the attorney's information. Ask again, David. We'll we'll be able to get the attorney's information as well. About the uh, their decision regarding uh, Chapter ninety one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they can put something together for that. Yeah. Okay. Steve? Yeah, were there any drainage changes made to accommodate what's happened here? No. No, you just put the stone down. It's sitting on top of a concrete or a hot top or whatever. Uh, it's sort of a hodgepodge of different surfaces is, is, you know, my general understanding of it. There's some, with some crumbled pavement and some gravel and miscellaneous concrete pads left over from things that have happened there over time and, and is that an accurate summation, Chris? Yeah, I, I would say so. There's, there's a yeah. concrete pad that used to have, have a uh, storage tank, a uh, above ground uh, storage tank on at one point, and then a lot of um, <clears throat> gravel, gravel on top of gravel. Yeah, and I can call the site plan up again, but it, 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 if you look into it closely, you can see that you know there's just sort of all kinds of different things that have been going on there historically and just covered it over. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, anybody else got anything? Just was curious to know if um, you're currently operating the the business there. We we are um, not. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Amy. Sorry, we are not. We were we we're waiting for um, approval here. Are you are you waiting for any uh, approval from any other? Um, commissions we we lined up the approvals for the other departments um, and we have a building permit um, ready to go for those storage containers so um, amy has one walkthrough left with the fire department and i think the last sign off ends up being health right uh, Correct. building departments building departments all set 
just was wondering if the other members of, of the of the board want to wait and you know complete the NOI or if you want to allow them to operate this temporarily pending pending review of the NOI yeah I, I we I don't think we can we probably can't even legally uh, allow them to operate without a because they don't have a permit from us so uh, <laughs> I, I would certainly not vote for something like that I, I think uh, we need to go through the process and um, if everything's in line um, I'm sure it'll go through pretty quick relatively speaking I'm sorry I had to step away because I had an emergency but did, so do they have a DEP number has that happened no they, they, they just submitted their NOI on Friday okay. so. and we have to wait for that also yep All right. so, so I guess if you want us to be able to approve this in two weeks um, DEP has been a little lax in assigning numbers of late. You might want to pressure them because we can't we can't sign off unless there's a DEP number. Okay, I um I actually sent a paper copy into Wilmington too. I don't know whether the EDEP process works more quickly on that or not, but we can continue to keep a finger on it. Yeah, you you may want to pay attention to that. Okay. But the check went in too, so it's just a question of them completing their process. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, we have anything else? Do we need a motion to continue, or we're just going to wait till? Uh, no, this is this is uh, just uh, informal. They're, they've uh, submitted their NOI, and hopefully, it'll be on the agenda for next time, and we will go from there. All right. All right, thank you, gentlemen. All right, all right. Thank, thank you. you all very much. All right, uh, next item, uh, certificates of compliance, requests for determinations, et cetera. Um, the first item, uh, the daily group, 3-7 Colby Farm Lane, uh, their representative, Lisa Mead, asked if uh, we could uh, do a continuance until, uh, until next uh, meeting. Correct, Lisa. Motion to continue correct. on that. Okay. Second. Uh, roll call. David Vine. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yep. Uh, Charlie, I'm not going to call on you because you were not here for the for the other uh, meetings we had. So I'll, uh, that'll happen a couple more times tonight. Um, Chair, could I just get a clarification? That's a continuance to the 19th of this month, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, next item is uh, Gary Swirling, three opportunity waivers, request for a certificate of compliance. Um, and I see Millennium Engineering has their hand up. And unmute yourself. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, good evening. This is uh, Matt Steinell from Millennium Engineering. Um, if I have uh, permission, I can share my screen. I can bring the plan up and, and quickly go through uh, the request that's before you tonight. Uh, we have a plan here for you if you want to speak to that. Okay. Um, I, I have a video as well. I can show that afterwards. Um, but the request that's before you tonight is in regards to three opportunity way. It's packaging specialties. Um, it is a uh, commercial development that was done uh, quite a while ago. Um, I think it's over five years now. And basically, there was an addition that was constructed on the street side of the building. It's the, the main bump out that you see closest to the road there. Um, and then you can see the, the wetland to the uh, to right here, uh, right bottom corner. And Millennium went out in 2017 and did an as-built on it, which is essentially the plan that you're looking at today, and found that the uh, the main structure and the associated work relative to the parking area uh, was all done in reasonable conformance with the original design plans. 
Um, what I found out more recently uh, in working with Julia, your agent, is that there was also a planting plan that we're, I'm not too thrilled that it's on Millennium border, head because, uh, border because we didn't actually do it and I didn't catch it, but I was unaware there was a planting plan that was part of this. So my letter, which states that everything is done in close reasonable conformance with no major deviations, uh, is out of date uh, because we just found out about the plantings on the street side and running between the wetland and the building and up the right-hand side of the property. Now, I've spoken with uh, Gary Swirling, who is the uh, the owner of the property, and he has indicated that all the plantings along the roadside in front of that uh, bump out there have been installed, and that's the video I have. I can show you that. Um, but the plantings that are between the wetland and that little area, that front yard there uh, on the right-hand corner there and running up the side, um, he was unaware of as well. Um, so I've spoken to him about that there. He has a uh, landscape uh, gentleman who is going to uh, count up the number of plantings that are needed in there um, and come up with a proposal for him to have those installed as soon as possible. Um, tonight, what we're asking the uh, commission here is uh, originally was for a request for certificate of compliance. What I would actually uh, request of the commission is a partial certificate of compliance for all of the major work related to the building and just leaving the vegetation uh, kind of with the open order. The reason for that and the reason for not just continuing this until that's resolved is uh, Gary's in the process of doing a refinance on the building. And with this outstanding order tying things up, he won't be able to do the refinance. And he's concerned with the way the economy is right now, rising interest rates that he's going to miss out on getting the, the refinance done in a time when it makes sense to do so. Um, again, I, I have the video. I can show you that the front is all done. They're, they're all five plus year old mature plants that are doing very, very well. Uh, he has every intention of doing the additional plantings on the side that uh, he said he was unaware of. And, and he will be happy to, if the commission feels that it's appropriate to issue a partial certificate, the department can hold the certificate until uh, he provides the commission with the uh, list of plantings that are to be installed as well as uh, if he would like he would offer up a bond to cover the cost of the installation to ensure that they're done to provide you with a level of comfort to know that it will be done okay um andy any thoughts on that part um i have no objection with the partial certificate of compliance if that's the question okay Usually Julie chimes in on things like that. So figured I'd ask. Um, the only thing I might mention is if take a look at the order of conditions and see if there's a two year growth requirement before we could issue a final after these things are planted. And he's aware of that. Um, and so the, the plants that are in the front are well over five years. And right. as I said, I have a video. I can show you the video if you'd like. Um, but he would understand that the new plants going in in that front corner and along the side would, would have that same two-year window. Okay. And of course, the partial we're doing is just going to be covering, it's not going to be even covering the plants, correct? Just going just to be the the, just the structure. Correct. So... Do the, the people who you're getting the refinancing from, do they understand that the property still won't be free and clear, that there will be these ongoing um, restrictions? Well, we're hoping that that won't be an issue with them. We just found out about this issue, so I don't know that the owners had time to uh, discuss that with them, but we're hoping with the partial certificate in hand on, on the, the structure, which is really the major focus of what the finance people, I think, are going to be concerned with. Um, the plantings, you know, that's something that, that Gary will back up with that that bond that he would you get, you would hold to ensure that the work is done, and, and we think that would be enough to satisfy any concerns that the refinance company may have. Okay, is that something we've done before, Joe? Taking a bond like that? We we've had uh, you know we've had uh, um, what is it called? It's been a while since we've gotten one, or we've had one uh, set up. I'm not even remembering what the term is for. It's an, an escrow account? Or escrow, a... Yeah, an escrow account, yeah. Escrow to do that. Um, so we need to decide whether we, we need to have that set up for uh, um, peace of mind. Uh, 
Sure, I, this is Andy. Um, if I, I'll defer to the commission, of course, but if I could speak to that. Um, if this is just a partial and it's restricted only to the structured uh, elements of the plan and not the plantings, um, then perhaps that particular detail could be dealt with at the time of final um, in terms of the, um, the escrow end of it. Um, unless you're concerned about attaching a condition to, at this time to the partial. Okay, uh, what, do, what do people think? Well, it doesn't sound like we're attaching a new condition. The conditions are already there. Yeah, the, well, the, the only new condition would be the uh, having you have to set up a bond. Um, yeah, I, I think we could do that. I mean, Julie has done it before, so it shouldn't be difficult. Okay. So we want to add a special condition that a bond get set up and then... Uh, right. Okay. Is that, uh, so that's pending review of the uh, estimate for the plantings, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, then do we have anything else regarding this? So do we have any idea what the time frame is going to be on this? Is it going to be resolved yes. anytime soon or is it going to be a while? Well, no, it's going to, it's going to happen quickly. Um, the owner got his landscape, uh, landscaper involved uh, today. As a matter of fact, when I contacted him, they had a conference call with me and he assured me that he could have the uh, proposal with the, the costs all outlined uh, no later than the middle of this coming week. Uh, he expected before the end of this week, but I, I told him middle of next week to give him enough room that he wasn't, you know, back, backing himself into a corner. So, um, we would have this, you know, completed and over to the town um, for them to review it by the middle of the next week, if not sooner. And that you're, you and your client are comfortable with a, uh, the city holding the um, equivalent cash amount for the plantings uh, until the plantings are taken care of? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Going? I'll make a motion to issue a partial certificate of compliance. A second. Okay. Um, Andy, can I have Charlie vote on this? Uh, yes, he, yeah. he did not have to participate in the original permitting to act at this time, if that's the question. Right. Okay. All right. Um, all right, roll call. Uh, Charlie Al Alovasetti. Present. Yes or no? I uh, yes. Okay. Um, Dan Warshaw. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. We look forward to your plans. Um, all right. Uh, next item. Uh, can I get a motion to open the public hearings? So moved. Second. All right, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Charlie Lovasetti. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, Charlie, we open up public hearings because it's actually a hearing uh, where the previous uh, items are not a hearing. Um, that the public can uh, can comment on on the hearing items. Um, all right. First item on the agenda is uh, Robin Wallace, four seventy nine Street, notice of intent. Um, Carol, were you going to make a uh, a statement regarding this? Well, I I, th I think what I should do is just vote present. I don't want to take a position on this because I know Robin quite well. Okay. Uh, this is Andy, if I could, it, uh, typically the um, indication is given by a board member by just recusing oneself uh, for the record and that's just sufficient. Okay, I recuse myself then, thank you. Do you want me to leave for the discussion? Uh, probably should sh at least shut your camera off and, uh, and your okay. audio. Okay. All right, um, so we have, uh, Devin and Lisa Mead and Joseph Cohen. Yes, thank right. you, commission members. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Uh, you're a little fluttery, 
in voice, but you're, we can hear you. You can hear me a little bit? Okay, yeah, that, that clip, works. You're, you're clipping, so let's put it that way. Um, well, so I'm here on behalf of um, our, for our client at 479th Street, as well as attorney Lisa Mead. Um, I'd just like to go over some of the uh, requests um, for supplemental documentation that the commission um, requested on our public hearing held on Wednesday, June 8th, 2022. Um, so it's just been a little under a month since, we, since we've seen you. Um, we have provided uh, updated plan sets to answer some of the questions uh, that the commission had in regards to um, the elevator specification, which shows the mechanicals um, in the top of the elevator. Further, um, we provided material um, in regards to the ramp. Uh, Kevin Latity, our, our architectural design, provided that specification to the commission as well. And we also um, updated the uh, detail for the pit um, that will be necessary for the elevator shaft as well, if I didn't already mention that. Um, so with that being said, I know the commission had some concerns about like the de depiction of the elevator. So we're, we're hoping that these plans in front of you today, which should be dated 6-21-22, um, and updated, which have also been provided to DEP, um, are, are available to you. And we'd like to, I'm not too sure if Lisa wants to take it away in regards to anything else, um, but I'd be open to any questions that the commission might have after the review of the waiver request and other supplemental materials we provided. Thank you, Devin. Uh, Mr. Chair, can you hear me today? I'm, I'm having some uh technology problems on my end too. So um, yeah, no, you're fine. Okay. Um, so I just want to point out on the on the plan in front of you, which uh, Devin indicated, um, everybody wanted to know at the last meeting, not everybody, but a couple of commissioners to more clearly depict where the elevator was. And you can see on the elevation on the lower left hand side on the west elevation, not the site plan, the elevation. Um, well, you can see it in both locations. So um, you can see how Kevin uh, called out the elevator, um, proposed elevator area. Um, and so you can more easily see how you would um, enter onto the existing deck at that bottom door um, via the ramp that you saw on the site plan. And then uh, you take an immediate turn and, and that goes into the elevator and you can see the proposed elevator shaft there. Um, and if you go back to the site plan, please, Andy. Um, and then you can see where you go on to the decking and then into the elevator, which again is uh, pointed out proposed elevator shaft hallway, um, floors one, two, and three. And you can see that also um, on these plans, which I think um, needed to be uh, pointed out. Um, I also want to uh, include the information that I provided to the commission and the chair earlier. Um, there was a question about the um, pit. Um, there's essentially no pit for this elevator. It's a pitless elevator. The clearance required underneath is to make sure that there's nothing under there. Um, and in this instance, uh, there's actually a hole that's going to be cut in the deck. And then there is existing bituminous already um, underneath the deck, which is uh, about 24 inches below that. So the, there's already um, an area between the deck, which is where the first door floor of the elevator opens up. Um, and the bituminous. So there's no pit that's going to be uh, required because the separation is always th already there. And what Devin indicated um, was that, of course, the mechanicals are in the top and it attaches to the sidewall. Um, if I could also just um, advise the board that the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals uh, did approve the uh, variance for the third floor living space, uh, as well as a special permit to modify pre existing non conforming structure. Um, at their meeting shortly after our last meeting here on June 8th. I think their meeting was the next week. Um, so the zoning board has approved those permits. Um, I remind the board that um, while the board has uh, its uh, requirements for a variance, which we went over at the last meeting and um, for which I provided documentation, uh, the applicable standard here is the ADA standard. 
um, which the city solicitor reminded the um, zoning board of, and I, I'm sure Andy can chime in on that because he was at that meeting, um, that under the ADA, when seeking a waiver from the local regulations and local ordinances, um, one, a medical ne necessity needs to be proven, which we have provided uh, evidence of to the commission, as well as the um, disability coordinator in the city. Um, then the next question is whether or not the accommodation is reasonable and necessary. And here our accommodation is to put the elevator in and to uh, slightly exceed the 25% requirement related to the amount of square footage that can be added to the structure. Um, and we, we exceed it by um, 93 uh, square feet, 63 square feet of which is attributable to improvements around the elevator and 30 square feet is attributable to uh, the additional living space in order to accommodate um, the appropriate needs um, for the handicapped individual. Um, if this board were to decide no, then the city would have to prove um, that the modifications would fundamentally and unreasonably alter the nature and purpose of the regulation. So I think that um, we have provided evidence that both um, we meet both the ADA criteria as well as the criteria related to the variance request. Um, and while arguably we're not required to provide mitigation measures, um, we have provided mitigation measures um, within our um, application um, uh, as part of the proposed plan. So um, with that, um, we're happy to take any questions um, from the commission and we would ask the commission approve our request uh, for the um, order of conditions to allow the work to proceed and the variance as I've indicated. Thank you very much. Lisa, did we get a do we get an official request for a variance? I've, yeah, I've yes, lost, was, lost yeah. track of where things are. Yes, it was part of the initial filing, Joe. It was um, all. It was in that entire package. Okay. I and, think it was like a couple of days late or something of that sort. Is what happened. Right. It, that's why you continue. Thank you. Um, that's why it was continued at the last meeting, right? Um, because folks hadn't had a chance to read everything. Okay. Um, I just have a question regarding the elevator shaft. Is that within the existing structure or is it being part of um, the deck that was underneath another deck or whatever? I, I think, Andy, if, if you could bring up the appraisal, the first page of that appraisal has a pretty good picture of the house. Yeah, just a moment. Let me pull that up. Steve, if I could answer the question while um, while he's doing that, yeah. if you can see this this heavy red line here right above the three point eight. Yeah. So the three point eight is the existing uh, edge of the house, okay. uh, and then and then there's a deck, and so the addition is um, that heavy red line in which the elevator and entry to the elevator will be located. Okay. All right, yeah, see it. See? All right, so in this picture, that wall of the building is still there and the elevator shaft is to the left of it. That's correct. And, and the opening. So That's the, correct. Does it, does it come out to that post that it's supporting the upstairs deck? Or? No, it's, it, it's not that wide. Okay. Okay, that answers my question as to what was what. Okay. Um, do we have anything else? <clears throat> Any other questions? Um, if we could just look on the plan and see where the, I think there was some mitigation planting and I, I don't remember where it was. Can um, also speak on that. It is 142 square feet of um, existing non-native plantings that are going to be removed and then restored with native plantings, which um, I think will um, enhance that area quite nicely. Okay. 
and those are all listed on the plan in detail as um, are they in Devin's submissions. Okay. All right. I'm good. You all stop? Yep. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Um, anybody from the public have any uh, comments or questions? Raise your digital hand if so. All right. I don't hear any. Um, now I'm not remembering, are we supposed to vote on the uh, variance mm. now or do we just close the hearing and vote on it later? My, uh, sorry, go ahead. My recollection, Mr. Chair, was you typically would vote on the order and the variance and then do your discussion about those things later, I guess. Well, generally what we do is we close the, uh, close the hearing. Um, yep. So I just wanna know if, since I can't remember, Andy. Sure. Yeah. Procedurally, I would uh, close the hearing, then vote uh, on the on the variance, or granting a variance and waiver, uh, and then go right to the uh, final decision from there, or whatever else might be included in the commission's uh, decision, wherever that may be. Okay. So just wait. Just wait for the end. Just close the hearing now. Correct. Okay. Unless the commission feels additional information is needed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, what do you mm -hmm. want to do? I'll move to close the hearing. Second. All right, uh, roll call. Charlie Olivetti. Olivetti. I'm going to get that right, Charlie. Mr. Uh, Chair. President. Yes. Yes, Lisa. I just wanted to remind the chair that Mr. Olivetti wasn't present at the last meeting. All oh, right. He's not. We. He can't be part of the closing of this. I'm. Right. I'm getting my my different parts messed up here. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So we'll start this again. Uh, roll call, Paul, uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Did, did I get a yet? I think you froze, David. Oh, oh, think, um, oh there you are. You're, you're kind of back now, kind of. Okay, well, I vote yes. Okay, <laughs> and, and I vote yes. Uh, Dan, did, I asked you, right, Dan? Can't remember. You did, yes, and I, and I voted yes. All right. So, thank you, um, and uh, we will uh, discuss discuss this later at uh, when we discuss the orders and conditions. Um, thank you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda: John Eric White, Department of Public Services, uh, two thirty nine Story Avenue, Notice of Intent. Uh, John Eric, are you? Oh. Yep, there he is. Hi, John Eric, are you able to address the commission? Yep, can you hear me? Okay. Yep, great. great. Um, so I'm only here for int intros and any other questions that, um, that you might have um, after our uh, consultant speaks. We have on board Tracy Adamski, and she is the uh, a, a senior, um, I believe her, Tracy, your title's a VP, um, and she has been the project manager for this since uh, the inception. What they did, uh, commission members, is they they updated our watershed protection plan to address climate change, and um, they finished it um, in September of twenty one, I think. Uh, but this particular project, we have we started permitting this particular project um, to protect our lower Artichoke Dam in our water supply. Um, we submitted a notice of intent with West Newbury Concom in August of 2020. We made some revisions internally. Um, she'll address those real quick. Um, and that triggered uh, more square footage of impact areas. So we had to launch a MEPA um, permitting process, water quality assert, the whole nine yards. Um, she'll touch upon that. So that's why we're in front of you. Uh, many of you members attended the commission meeting in West Newbury last week. Um, thank you very much. So um, 
this project, as you as you already know, and mainly I'm saying this for the public, it's really to protect our lower artichoke dam because the existing spillway is three feet lower than the current 100 year flood elevation. So our goal is simply to request a permit from you folks uh, and West Newberry to allow us to, to put in um, washed stone, um, fairly large stone, four to six inch, so it might be eight, uh, to form the foundation so that we can come in and if there's a hurricane predicted or a surge predicted, we can come in and put in some sandbags. So on that note, um, Tracy, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy Damsky. She can take it from there and I'll be available for any questions. Thanks, John Eric. Um, so I'm a, a planner and, and VP as John Eric mentioned with a uh, tie-in bond. Um, and as John Eric mentioned, the reason that we're here today is to protect Newberry Port's water supply. Um, the, the map is up here that shows the lower artichoke reservoir this is the lowest um, of three reservoirs, uh, starting with Indian Hill um, to the south, which all these flow north. Um, so Indian Hill flows into the upper Artichoke Reservoir, which flows into the lower Artichoke Reservoir. And there is one raw water intake, which is located you know, approximately where that um, project location leader uh, points to uh, near the lower artichoke reservoir in the spillway. So um, it's about a hundred or so feet over to the east of the lower artichoke spillway. As John Eric had mentioned, that spillway happens to be three feet below um, the current FEMA mapped 100 year flood zone, which is mapped at elevation 12. Um, the remainder of uh, the embankment or the majority of the embankments uh, for the lower Artichoke River is at elevation 12, out, at or slightly above um, elevation 12. So the concern here, um, which was confirmed through some, uh, some modeling that, that was performed, is that uh, the lower Artichoke is susceptible to a backwater event with flooding from the Merrimack River coming up the Artichoke um, River and flowing over that spillway uh, into the lower Artichoke Reservoir. With that, um, it would bring brackish water and other pollutants that the city's water treatment plant is not designed to handle. So the goal here is to provide a, a temporary solution so that in the event of um, an emergency, you know, an Henri coming up the coast um, or another, you know, large storm that has the potential for this backwater event that the city would be able to come in and install some protective device so that water, um, you know, to, to prevent the water from backflowing over the spillway here. So thank you. This, this here in, is the, the project. So it involves um, construction of a foundation, um, which is uh, shown here in the stone adjacent to the spillway. And as part of that foundation, there needs to be the side slopes and access to it. Um, that foundation would be at the elevation of the crest of the spillway. And that would provide the city with the option of coming in and putting in um, super stacks, so large sandbags during uh, or you know before a predicted event, so that there was some protective measures for the reservoir. So uh, as you can see um, on the, there's a line. Um, right about where the leader again says sheet, uh, C sheet C102. That's the town line between the town of uh, West Newberry and the uh, city of Newburyport. So previously we were um, only looking at having a very small foundation um, right at the spillway, but uh, you know, in, in further discussions and as we, we looked at other options with the city, it's, uh, 
became clear that you know the city needs to have easy access here. And so having the ramps for the city to be able to drive onto, to put um, these materials onto the ramp, uh, or, or sorry, onto the foundation to protect the reservoir um, was important. So that's where our uh, impacts expanded and expanded um, across the town line into the city of Newburyport as well. So we have um, impact to land underwater, to bank, um, which is the embankment of the existing dam of the reservoir, um, as well as some uh, land subject to flooding. And all of these are necessary impacts. Um, you know, we work to minimize um, the impacts as much as practical, but because of the nature of the project and uh, the nature of the location, uh, we were not able to avoid impacts here. Um, we are considered a, or we're requesting that the commission consider this a limited project um, per 310 CMR 10.53I, which is the maintenance, repair, and improvement of structure, or, you know, but not substantial enlargement of structures, including dams and reservoirs, and import pertinent work to such dams and reservoirs, which is what we are doing here to be able to provide that uh, temporary protection measures for the reservoir. Um, I can go through the, the impacts if you want, or um, I guess answer any questions that you may have. Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you give us some of the, uh, go through some of the impacts, if you would. So um, in Newburyport, uh, we have 100 feet of bank that's being impacted, uh, 1,800 square feet of land underwater, and approximately um, 1,080 uh, cubic feet of uh, bordering land subject to flooding. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I was wondering um, if you considered doing this work further downstream at the Curzon Mill Dam where you wouldn't have anywhere near as much length of embankment or anything to worry about. And, um, you know, if, if that was considered. That dam I don't believe is owned by the city. It isn't. But so, so that would, um, you know, there would be some concerns there for, you know, we'd have to obtain additional land ownership um, and analyze that area fully. Um, here, this is all area that we're working in that is uh, land that is owned and under the control of the city of Newburyport. I just, I, just, I just thought it would be a much smaller project, perhaps, not being an engineer, I could be wrong on that, but um, anyway. So I have a question. So if this is being done because of the dangers of flooding, is it, isn't it possible to do the project in such a way that you don't have to be bringing in sandbags? Because you may not know that you need them before until it's too late. Sometimes you know, around here, the weather happens quickly. So is, is, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand enough of the project to know whether uh, this is realistic. This is Andy, I just being a city official and having to deal with capital projects, and maybe John Eric White uh, maybe be able to speak to this, but I, I imagine that has a little bit to do with funding sources and the avail, uh, availability of doing things in phases. Is that fair to say, John Eric, or is that, am I mistaken? Um, yes, I mean, yes and no. Primarily, this is this is it's, it's for emergency purposes. So, um, as far as capital projects, it's really um, not quite related. When, when FEMA changed the, the flood elevation back in um, 2012, they they raised it. it. Used to be nine, then they raised it to 12, and um, so for 10 years we just haven't done anything about it. Um, so, what all this does for you, commission members in, in the public, all this does is it sets us 
it provides a foundation to protect us against the 100 year storm. Now, concurrent with this is, is more what Andy's talking about. So yes to the phasing, absolutely. Um, um, what he's talking about is we have going on at the same time, we hired Time Bond, uh, their, their preeminent uh, dam engineering firm. We hired them to redesign the lower artichoke dam. And once we get their proposal and go through the paperwork, we have a grant with the state for $85,000 to pay for that. So that's very good news. We're going to proceed ASAP on that. That is to raise the dam such that we address both sea level rise. We'll be in front of your commission um, on that in the future, but also to get the spillway up to at least elevation 12 for ASAP. So um, first thing first, get the stone. If we get any spaghetti lines coming up our way for hurricane, and usually to answer one of the commission members, um, I, I, I missed your name, I apologize for that. Um, usually there is good news. We have three or four days of, of forecasted warnings. So we, we do feel confident that there's plenty of time when a, when a major surge event or a major storm comes in. Um, so that's what this is for. And to repeat, we're, we're gonna go after raising the dam, but we have to design the dam first. I see. Thank you. That answers my question. It seemed like it was too short term. Uh, and, and along those lines, um, I, at the last meeting, you explained the time frame as far as actually employing the the bags, and it might be helpful if you talk about that. Yeah, uh, Tracy, you want me to take this? Sure. So. Um, Let's say hypothetically that both commissions give us the approval to install the foundation stone. This is for the foundation stone. That is it. Um, obviously, you're interested in how we can maneuver the sandbags, but that's really part two of this, which is um, to be done under emergency um, uh, forecasted uh, weather forecast. So the short answer is. Um, our water super, uh, Tom Kuzik, he's got crews that he'll have on standby, kind of like on-call uh, services for, for contractors. And it's pretty, it's, it, it, it really is basic. In the old days, they would grab a line of people, and I'm not joking because they did it at the Bartlett, the Bartlett um, Spring Pond for the 1936 hurricane. Um, get a line of people and, and carry sandbags and dump them and dump the sandbags to to. to uh, prevent the water from coming in. This really is no different. It, it, it's, it's a backhoe. It lifts a huge, uh, uh, large silt, set, um, uh, the large sacks. The name is evading me, just like Tracy. Super, uh, sacks. super sack. Super sacks. Yeah, yeah, super sack. So, you know, it, it's nothing but a large grocery bag that is, you know, it can fit a ton of sand. It's, it's nothing, it's nothing glamorous. A front end loader can lift it up. Plop it in. That's why we need the ramp. The ramp, they will drive down the ramp with a backhoe, go to the far end on the western end and start placing them there and keep placing them in. And we'll place, uh, this is wide enough for, for at least two rows wide. Um, the foundation design, the width is for the multiple uh, width, mul multiple rows of, for, for width, but also because the spillway is an OG wear, which is curved. Um, it's a natural shape of water um, flowing in free flow. So it's like a parabola. That gets too slip slippery and slimy. So that's what the stone's for. And the super sacks would just sit on top of that. In addition, in my mind, there's no doubt that uh, Tom's crew is going to have to get, you know, regular 80 pound bags to, to, to fill in the smaller gaps. And it's really going to be um, who really knows until you get there, but that's the short of it is is a backhoe with a front end loader. And, and so are you, the bags are, the bags are only gonna go on the spillway part of it or are they gonna go up the uh, sides and all? So they'll go, um, the, if, if you look close, and Andy, if you can pick on one side and, and grab the wing wall, it'll be the, you can pick either side of the, yeah, pick either side. Um, Yep, zoom in there. Perfect. Okay, so you can see the wing wall. Can everyone see the wing wall? Yep, perfect. So 
essentially the stone foundation will be up against the wing wall. The top of the wing wall in the middle where the spillway is, if you put the mouse there, uh, go to the middle, the middle, the, the, the wing wall has like three walls to it. The middle wall, uh, put your hand on the middle wall, Andy. Uh, no, that's the spillway. Go to the side wall, wing wall, right there. Yeah. So left and right, that, that section right there is elevation 14. And then at the angle point, the 45 degree angle point on the right, right there. So that, that slopes down. It's a, it's a regular, like a head wall that slopes down. That slopes down to uh, like elevation nine or something like that. Um, the stone foundation goes up to that wing wall. The wing wall is higher than the stone foundation. So the stone will be dropped against that wing wall. And then the sandbags will be on top of that crammed up against the wing wall to keep it watertight. Okay. I have an image. If, um, if you want me to share my screen, I can show that to you. Yeah, that would, that would be good. Okay. Um, can I get... You know how to do that? No, I'm looking to see if I have the okay to do that. There's a, should be a button at the bottom of your screen that says share screen. I don't see it. I just see my mute and raise hand. She has, I think she has to be made a co-host in order to share this. Yeah, she got to be uh, promoted to a panelist probably. Okay, uh, so these, these are, all right, thanks. So these are materials not submitted before the meeting. All right, thank you. And while she's looking for that, um, it's important for the commission to, to understand this is primarily for a backwater event, a surge. Um, now, what storm is perfectly backwater well you get a coastal st storm surge that's easily comprehensible i'm sure you can all figure that uh, visually see that but usually hurricanes have inland uh rainfall events too so um the combination of the two the water may be uh rising at the at the same elevations on both sides so what you see in front of you is a a setup where those are just, that's just graphics. It's a, it's a sandbag, but it's just a graphic that they grabbed um, from the image catalog that they had. It's not gonna look exactly like that, but you get the idea. Yeah. Now, in our case, the left side of this vantage point, the left side is what's is is where the water's coming from. That's what's going on. This, this picture right here shows the water on the right, um, which, may rise in, a, in a, a combination of a coastal and an inland storm to be determined. But if it's a pu purely backwater event from a storm surge, it's going to be coming from the left. So that's what this is all about. So John, Eric, what, assuming you, you put these things in place and they're in there for a couple of days before you decide you don't need them or the storm passes or whatever. So you've got the water backing up behind it, you know, that normally would be going over the spillway. If what happens if that gets to a depth where it's flowing over the, the super socks, sacks, or whatever? Or, yep. So, um, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you no, go ahead. I was just, I, I'm, I, I don't understand what would happen. <laughs> um, well, don't feel bad because, you know, we have a rough idea, but. Um, the only thing we can provide is what we what we uh, will anticipate. But at the end of the day, we just have to monitor and see what's going to be a best situation. So the storm that we are figuring with, that would hit us, to be honest, we kind of a combination of the two. So high, high surge, but there's going to be a rainfall event that's going to be filling up the reservoir. Common sense. I mean, come on. So, or I shouldn't say that. There might be a purely a surge event. That's fine. But to to meet Steve's question about the rising reservoir, these super sacks need to go three feet higher. Okay, that means the water could be three feet higher on the upland side, which is the right side of this picture. Um, when the water is on the left and the surge is the same elevation. Um, this, it's pretty much equilibrium, so the super sacks don't act as a retaining wall. But 
the minute the surge is gone and then the left side is below the spillway, the minute it's below the spillway, don't wait any longer for the reservoir to rise. Just start pulling sacks. And that will be a uh, uh, play it by ear type of thing. What we do know, we, we will anticipate that you remove one sack, you're going to get high velocity. So get ready to move two. So get ready to move three. The more you move, um, the less velocity. Now, I'm not, I don't want to exaggerate to say that there's so much velocity that it's just going to start wiping things out. But that's why I think we'll end up with two rows because I think horizontal, the horizontal forces may be big enough um, to, to warrant two rows just to be safe. And um, that's how we see it happening is um, we keep moving them at a careful pace. And, um, and that's, that's, that's what we anticipate at this point. Um, what, one other, looking at this photo, one other question I had was, if, say the, we do start getting a flooding event um, or a backwater event, um, how, how high is that going to be able to go until um, it starts flowing over the earthen part of the, uh, the dam, you know, on the other, either side of the wing walls? Yeah, so that turns into, um, you know, theoretically greater than the 100-year storm. The, the earthen berm is 12 or higher. There's one section in West Newbury that we have to fill because it, it uh, eroded a little bit. Um, but greater than the 100, um, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, and at that point, we're just going to, you know, Tom's crews and, and everyone, myself, whoever's, you know, we'll have to monitor the, the condition of the dam. Um, I know that might not give you an answer, but um, yeah, you can get a 200 year storm and then it, it'll be going over. Yeah. So well, this is this is primarily for the hundreds year because it's only three feet. If it's higher. Um, yeah. Tracy, I mean, I don't know if Chris has looked at higher than three feet for sandbags. You we know have he... not because the um, the embankment is also at approximate exactly. elevation 12. Right. So this just brings the spillway up to the same elevation of the rest of the dam embankment. So oh, okay. as, as, as John Eric noted, it brings it up to the 100. So this is protection for the 100 year storm. OK, well, above that... that, the waters could be higher and um you know it, it could be overflowing both the sandbags and the embankment all right so the rest the rest of the uh embankment around there is except for that little bit in west newberry is at 12 anyway so okay it, it is there's there's a little bit right at the wing wall on the newberry port side that we're looking as part of this project to you know it, it's it's not eroded by much but just to bring that back up to 12 as well okay um, are you going to be doing any uh, serious tree cutting on the Newber Newburyport side? Is Tom on the line? Uh, I'm not. Whoops. Oh, yeah. TG. Yeah, okay. He's under acronym. Yeah, Tommy with us. Turn your mic on. Yep. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, as far as I know, there's really not going to be any um major tree clearing on the newbury port side it's that side's been pretty well taken care of just because of the fact that excuse me the city's had access to that area so it's nowhere near in the condition as the west newbury side which as you can see um not in this picture but if you look at it you know the west newbury side is just trees everywhere because it just it was no access over there for the city to be able to take care of that section of the dam okay All right. Um, do we have anything else on this? Do, do we know or um, are we allowed to know what, what Wes Newberry decided the other night after that, their meeting? Um, I know, can you clarify that? 
Yeah, Tracy, I think you're better suited uh, for the overall communication that you've been having with them. Sure. Um, they have continued. Um, they wanted a site walk, and so that occurred uh, Sunday, um, but they have not yet had a chance to um, walk the site. So they, they walked over here near the spillway, but they have yet to walk over on the other side, on the West Newberry side. So we're waiting for that to happen, um, and then we'll be in front of the commission again. So, okay. so they, they have continued at this point. Okay. Michelle Green, did you, have anything, did you have anything to add, Michelle Green? I know you raised your hand earlier. I will uh, we'll say no. Okay, go ahead. Um, John, Eric, the, the super sacks will be filled and um, near by and waiting to um, be administered. Uh, are they in a resource area? Right now they're outside the resource area. They're behind, you know, the new access road for the West End easement, the West End sewer? It's a, it's over by the gravel um, access road, uh, uphill from the pump station, a couple of hundred feet away. So the answer is it's not in the resource area. No, it's not in this resource area. It's up. Um, it's over by this the uh, access road. Okay, so there's nothing that's going to get impacted by the fact that. Um, not that I can see. Um, it's really the just the movement from the access road, which is already built over a paved. Um, Oh, good visual, Andy. So, okay, see, oh, there it is right there. So see the pump station, Andy? Yep, right there. That road, uh, this is the first actual uh, uh, arrow that I've seen with the uh, gravel access road. Um, see the fork in the road? It's like a fork in the road, the very first beginning of the access. Uh, keep going to the right. Yeah, right there. So Tom's got him right in that area there. Yeah. And that's part oh, of paved area. Yeah. That's okay. West Newberry, right? I uh, know that's us. That's us? Yeah. Oh, trying, trying to figure out where I'm looking here. So the access down to the spillway will come from just a continuation past the pump house and then down, I, yeah, right along there? Correct. Yep. It's, it's already a grass access. They go down there all the time for whatever they need to do. Yeah. So basically about 90% of the work here is in West Newbury. We're just approving some access. Is that? That's how I see it, yeah. Per correct, there, the majority of the work is in West Newbury. Okay. All right, anybody else? At least on the commission. All right. Anybody from the uh, public want to weigh in? Raise your digital hand if so. Okay. Not seeing anything. Um, what do we want to do? Um. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Just <clears throat> wanted to make sure that what if there are any material changes pending West Newberry's continuation and their hearing, do we want to close now or do we want to wait and see? if it makes more sense to, I, I don't know. It, I don't see anything personally that would be a real issue, but just throwing it out there. Yeah, well, I would guess they'd, they'd have to file for an amendment or, you know, for something, if, if there was something that big, um, that would change at least what happens in Newburyport. But um, 
we can we can decide. We can re can we reopen if that happened? No. Oh. Well, I no, I don't think so. I think once we once we close it, because we're gonna we would once we close it, most likely we're gonna vote on a order of conditions tonight. Um, but you know what? Um, John, Eric, Tracy, um, what's your uh, what's your view on us closing the public hearing tonight? Tracy, what up? I'm going to turn it over to Tracy and get her professional opinion. Yeah, I'd, I'd say, you know, if there are any material changes, we would come back to you. Um, and there is a process for requesting amended order of condition if the material changes are such that it warrants that or it could be considered a minor change that's allowable under the existing order of conditions. So, so there is a process for us to come back if there is a material change. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm a yes. That's a okay. vote. Yes. All right. Thanks. Uh, David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Uh, Charlie Alvesetti. Hello, Vesetti. Uh, yes. Okay. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank uh, you, Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Sorry for the tardiness. No problem. You were you were here when we needed you. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I get a, a motion to close the public hearings? So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Charlie Lovasetti. Yes. And I vote yes. All right, uh, let's see. Now we will go on or go back to the city of Newburyport Central Waterfront Park improvements. Uh, and we have uh, Sasaki hey here. here. Uh, yeah, so this is Andy Port. Uh, I'm um, acting as project manager for the city for this project. And so with us is tonight uh, to speak to this project. We have a couple of folks, uh, Marin Braco, who's our project manager from Sasaki. Andy, I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Can I, I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to be hopping off early. Okay. Um, so if, I, um, do we need to do orders of conditions um, for 79th Street? That's, I came on really for that primarily tonight. So. Okay, no, we can, uh, and I'm good. Yeah, why don't we go to that first? We'll take care of that. It'll be a cleaner process if Dan uh, is here for that. So uh, let's just, uh, let's do that. That's a, thanks for reminding me of that, Dan. Um, so we're gonna go to orders of conditions and uh, we'll start with uh, 479th Street. Um, did we have much in the line of uh, uh, special conditions for this? I think it'll be just our typical Plum Island stuff. Okay. And we do we do have to vote on the um, yeah. on the variance too. On the yeah. variance. Okay. Um, well, in that case, uh, are we uh, are we good with the variance? We have what we need for that. If so. Need a uh, need a yeah, motion. I'll, I'll motion to uh, to issue the variance um, in a uh, for the public public benefit that this provides to um, a disabled a disabled person, and so I'd like to um, move that we issue the variance on this one. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Dan Warshaw. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. And uh, I will vote yes. Carol uh, recused herself and Charlie was yeah. not here for it. So, all right, so that's done. And now for the order conditions for 479 Street. If there's no other special conditions other than what we have for Plum Island, I'll, I'd move to issue the order of conditions. Second. Okay, uh, roll call, Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. David Vine? Yes. 
and everybody else. All right. Thank you, Dan, for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you. If you want to do um, 239 Story Ave real quick, um, or if you think that's a longer discussion, whatever, however you want to proceed, Joe, is fine with me. But I'm happy to, to vote on that, too, if you want. Oh, OK. Um, we want, want to do that, guys? Sure. We, we don't have any real special conditions for that either, right? I don't, unless there are special conditions for working around a water supply. Yeah. For machinery. Uh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's start of our part of our standard ones too about uh, okay. washing equipment and uh, I'm, I'm gonna bet that the water department's not gonna want any oil going into the uh, into the reservoir. So, uh, yeah. but all that should so, be already yeah. in the standards. So, or standard, uh, Special conditions. Um, Assume I, also that there would be no seasonal or, or any fish or anything else that we would uh, have to concern ourselves because of the emergency nature. Yeah, and probably the limited project nature too. Yeah. No, well, I don't know of any. Um, I'm assuming if if Andy knew it knew of any, he'd be yelling at us. So. Um, all right, uh, why don't we, uh, somebody wants to make a motion for that? I'll make a motion to issue the order of conditions for 239 Story Avenue. Second. All right, uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Char Charlie Alovacetti. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thanks for taking care of that, Dan. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. See you all later. Have a good, have a good yeah, vacation. Have a vacation. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. All right, Sasaki. Now, now you're on. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, Marin Breko is our project manager from Sasaki. And Marin, if you wouldn't mind, feel free to um, to share screen uh, for the slides. Um, there's a couple of other folks from Sasaki's team here. Um, just going to announce a couple of folks so you're all aware who they are. Um, Steve Engler is from Sasaki. He's working on the civil engineering side of this project. Uh, Jamie Billette uh, is working on um, some of the plans as well. Um, Dan Dwyer is working on the architectural elements of the plan. Um, Stephanie Krul is going to be speaking to some of the commission's jurisdiction and resiliency matters. Um, and there's a few other folks that aren't here this evening on the team, uh, but they are uh, providing plans for us for the Market Landing Park expansion project. So we're going to run through tonight, um, I think, briefly the uh, jurisdiction and what we're doing for resiliency as best we can uh, for this project, uh, municipal project. Um, it's being done in phases, so keep that in mind. Um, and then we'll open up for whatever questions you might have. This is in advance of a regular filing. So just like your other project this evening from John Eric White, we're just trying to get an informal uh, understanding of any concerns the board might have um, so that when we're making the filing, we can speak to those um, as detailed as possible. We've tried to address those here by both the jurisdictional boundaries and the resiliency elements of the project. So, uh, Marin, do you want to take over the slides and um, feel free to do any other introduction to the team? Uh, sure, I think you've covered everyone. Thank you. And so I'll give you just a brief overview of the design and then have Stephanie walk you through uh, the resource area impacts. Let me just go to full screen here. And Dan Dwyer will speak to the resiliency strategies related to the building. So this is the proposed, this is the proposed uh, expanded waterfront park. You'll see uh, with the new design, there's expanded green space, uh, lawn and tree plantings. Uh, in terms of circulation, we've maintain the existing ways to the water and also uh, extended new ways to the water through Ferry Wharfway, Central Wharfway. Uh, we've also extended the uh, city's rail trail through the shared use path going from the east, uh, meeting the waterfront trust property at the boardwalk and then going to the west. Along that shared use path, we have a number of activation moments. So we have picnic and hammock grove here among the tree plantings at the edge. Uh, Ferry Wharf Plaza has uh, tiered seating for social gathering, as well as swing structures that look out to the water. The West Embayment Plaza will be 
uh, activated by a sculptural element created by a local artist. We've also been working with the city on an indigenous people's place uh, to create a passive place for a more contemplative area within the park that can also hold events for that community. And then finally, we have the uh, visitor center and restroom facility, which um, Dan will be speaking to in more detail. And just uh, to give you a sense of the principles that are really driving the project, um, in terms of programming, we want to create an active and inclusive destination uh, that works throughout the seasons, uh, really embrace the character of Newburyport and the waterfront, uh, connect to this working waterfront to downtown, and from an environmental perspective, create a resilient and sustainable uh, landscape. And from here, I'll hand it over to Stephanie. Thanks, Marin. Um, so just a little refresher on some of the background of the park. Um, it was created mainly through fill between the late 1800s and all the way up to the late 1960s. So it's relatively low lying. Um, it was all previously developed even prior to becoming a park. Um, so as Marin mentioned, the work is primarily located on the NRA parcel west and NRA parcel east and um, doesn't really impact the waterfront trust parcels, uh, parcel which goes through the center of the project and also along all of the waterfront. So the resource areas and buffer zones on the site that are jurisdictional under the Wetlands Protection Act and Newbury Ports Wetlands Ordinance include uh, buffer to coastal bank, um, a, it's approximately 49,000 square feet within the 100 foot buffer. There's about 123,000 square feet of impact to the 200 foot riverfront area and about 177,000 square feet of impacts to land subject to coastal storm flowage, which we delineated by um, placing the base flood elevation of 12 feet that's on the firm actually on the topography of the project site. Uh, next slide, please. So Marin went over, you know, basically the layout of the proposed park. So work within the resource areas will include demolition of the parking areas and the existing pathways. There'll be some limited tree removal. Um, there'll be excavation of some contaminated soils. There is an AUL on the site um, and, it, and as the soil contaminated soils are encountered, they will be characterized and it'll be determined if they can be reused on site or if they need to be taken off site. There'll be placement of fill either with that um, ex the excavate from the site or with clean fill to actually raise the grades a bit and that will improve resiliency. There'll be construction of new pathways and plazas um, and the other elements that Marin um, described to you earlier. There'll be replacement and addition of utilities. There'll be a whole new stormwater management system. The parking lot will be reconfigured and the, there'll be new landscaping, including new trees. Next slide, please. So regarding the parking lot reconfiguration, this is where we're going to be reducing the amount of impervious cover on the site. So they'll be replaced with smaller asphalt parking lots and they'll have granite curbs and concrete sidewalks associated with them. There'll be a decrease in impervious surface of at least 18,700 square feet. As the design progresses, um, we're expecting that there could be some further reductions in the impervious cover. And this reduction will improve the functioning of LSCSF and the buffer zone. It'll be adding um, vegetated area and that'll filter and slow stormwater before it enters the river and it'll provide a rougher surface to slow the velocity of the coastal floodwaters. And then the planting and landscaping installation um, will take over um, from the impervious coverage and there'll be new trees and shrubs, um, there'll be new lawn, perennial planting areas, and then uh, a small event lawn with that will have some reinforced turf to allow vehicular access to the bike path for emergency vehicles and for dock vehicles. As Marin mentioned, um, there's also the new visitor center that's actually gonna be constructed outside of all the resource areas, um, but nevertheless, it will be constructed resiliently. And Dan is now gonna talk about um, some of the measures that will accomplish that.
Hi, good evening. Um, yeah, so the uh, visitor center and bathroom building is uh, replacing the existing two structures. There's the existing bathroom building that has a men's and women's restroom. And then there's a, um, uh, a small visitor center. It's over just to the, uh, the right side of the slide, kind of under that text. Um, and so we're replacing with a new building, a new wood frame building with wood clapboard siding. Uh, the front, the south end of the building, which is not marked on this plan, but the south end, the wider bit of the building is the visitor center. It's about 230 square feet. Um, and then there's a small mechanical room with janitor's closet in the middle. And then there's eight individual uh, restrooms along the, the, the back side of the building on the two sides. Uh, this building um, uh, is about 922 square feet at the moment. And we currently have it located where you see it's drawn in gray. Uh, we're, we're looking to move it towards the uh, east where it's drawn in purple. And we're just in the process of doing that now uh, to limit the amount of grading that we do. Uh, so as Stephanie and Marin had said, the, the, that we're the sort of the base flood elevation that we started with of elevation 12 is that our FEMA AE zone, it's that sort of, darker purple line that runs through the, the drawing. Uh, that's elevation 12, and we're setting our building at elevation 15.33, which is 40 inches above that elevation 12. Um, and, um, and so that's, uh, I'd, I believe that's our requirement to, to set the building at 40 inches above elevation 12. Go to the next slide. Uh, if I could just insert uh, in there just a uh, sure. note, um, Dan was speaking about resiliency. Part of what we did in recent weeks was to have a meeting with a couple of folks representing um, stakeholders in the resiliency end of things. So uh, a couple of folks from the resiliency committee, um, Julie Gobertson, um, Jane Healy, the chair of the committee, John Eric White and others. Um, to walk through this and to try to do the best we can here to uh, move the building, um, you know, as, as high you know, uh, as high as we can on the site here, without creating substantial grading issues for the you know coming decades. Um, and um, and this is, as Dan mentioned, the reason why we're shifting it further to the uh, the east here. So we've tried to take into account feedback from some folks who are keeping a, a good eye on the resiliency needs that the city has. Yeah, thanks, Andy. That's that's correct. Um... So again, limiting the grading is the reason we're pushing the building back a little bit towards the east. Um, and another thing we're introducing with this building is we're making it so that the, um, uh, normally we would might have put this uh, as a slab on grade building, it's just a little one story building. Um, but we're looking at making it so that there's a small crawl space underneath and the, the floor is actually wood frame construction so that it could be lifted in the future if need be. Uh, similar to how a, a small house might be lifted where there's a basement wall construction and there's wood frame uh, floor and wall above that is tied together so it can easily be lifted um, if need be in the future. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you. So we can open it up for questions now. Do you have anything? So commissioners, you'll be seeing this formally as an NOI um, for the project, but um, we just wanted to give you an informal review in advance and see if you had any questions or concerns um, so we can elaborate on those, those areas and the, the filing if need be. I just have one uh, little question. The shared use path that you've indicated, what's that going to be made out of? That will be asphalt. We're using the same detail as the existing rail trail, so we'll be making sure to match that pavement. You, you, you had indicated that this would be phased, and um, I was wondering if the whole project is going to be coming before us, and what kind of time frame would you anticipate uh, to complete all the work? Um, that's a great question, and Mayor, and I could probably better speak to it just because on the city side, obviously, um, we deal with the funding end of it. Um, so Sasaki's under contract to design the entire project. Um, that's important, I think, uh, for us looking at it from a project management perspective, we have to make sure that the transitional areas make sense, um, even if we have to do it in phases. Um, for the commission's perspective, because you get to see the whole product um, and how it relates to other uh, areas. But in this essence right now, we're anticipating only having enough funding uh, right now on our best track for construction of the park elements. 
so essentially the west and east embayment are uh, 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 wings of the park for off the embayment, uh, the shared use path, and then the pedestrian ways, the new Central Wharf Way, a uh, newly named Central Wharf Way uh, and Fair Wharf Way extending out to the street um, more fully. But uh, beyond that, other elements may be phased in. Um, some of the site elements, uh, swing sets, uh, you know, site uh, furnishings might be donated. Um, the visitor uh, center element will be a later point because we're hoping for additional outside funding, federal or state uh, related to infrastructure, uh, tourism and whatnot, um, or any other sources, but it will not be CPA related. And uh, we're hopeful that the council will be approving um, CPA funding for this first phase of park construction uh, in the coming weeks. Um, we're also going for a state grant for construction. So um, by all accounts, our hope is to start construction of the park improvements in the spring of next year. We would have to then uh, do a second phase for the parking lot areas and some plantings that go with that area. Um, we're doing obviously the underground infrastructure first, so we're not um, having to dig up the park space later on. Um, but, um, but to try to save costs and do what we can, uh, we're trying to do the, the base or the framing uh, of this entire park uh, you know, in the first phase. That would be next season. Um, and then uh, it's a little bit um, uh, harder to say when the second phase or the visitor center building um, would be completed. So um, we may have some tr transitional areas uh, in the interim, uh, you know, like you see with the, the gravel parking lots or the um, the seashell sort of seating area that's there today uh, up by Merrimack Street. Um, yeah, part of the reason for the question was that you had indicated that stormwater management would be included in the project. And I was just wanted to make sure that each phase, uh, you know, would be, would, things would be taken care of such that, uh, um, that we wouldn't uh, be in yes. a situation where we, we have yes. worse condition. Yes, yeah. So Steve here is here from the, the civil engineering side and he's been working very closely with John Eric White and we have no intention of um, leaving any unfinished uh, conditions or um, conditions that would exacerbate anything down there. Um, in the interim, even though uh, we may not be able to do the, all the parking lot improvements initially, um, we were doing any of the stormwater you know, features that are tied in there so that there isn't any uh, lack of continuity in the interim. I don't know, if, Steve, if you want to elaborate on that at all, but um, yeah. we obviously don't want to leave any loose ends on that infrastructure initially. Yeah, that's correct. I think it sort of sums it up. Um, it's, I mentioned earlier, the, um, we are looking to do some drainage improvements to help reduce some flooding in the area, working with John Eric White on the design of the new culvert um, that brings water from Water Row to the bulkhead. Um, and so that would go in um, for a lot of the park projects. And then um, the parking lot will put in to the extent necessary any new drainage systems to mitigate runoff from the temporary parking lots and um, you know, install this final drainage system with the final park construct the parking lot construction. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Um, is the shared use path elevated to act as sort of a berm for resiliency or is it at the current level? It is uh, not. Yeah, we, we have to, I mean, part of it, keep in mind, um, and it's a great question. We, we talk about this quite a bit with the Central Waterfront, um, with Waterfront West and with other areas of the city. Um, we have to meet existing grades at the Central Embayment. Um, the boardwalk in, is not being raised at this time. There is obviously an effort to raise the bulkhead wall um, and to better protect it um, in its aging condition. Um, so we do plan on raising uh, the bulkhead wall. The boardwalk is not on a near-term path to be raised, although um, we've walked through with the structural engineer for that separate project, um, the ability to just essentially raise off of the structure that's there today to keep going higher as we need. Um, but the path itself, as Marin said, will be essentially at grade. Um, it has to meet the embayment. It has to meet the sculpture park plaza. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot of transition between there, um, but, um, but we are raising as much park space as we can um, um, with the grading that we're doing here, you can see the berms, obviously, behind the berm, the raised areas where folks will be sitting. Um, but the path itself would need to meet the embayment and the um, intersecting paths, and that would make it difficult to raise up the grade with any, um, unless you sort of have a lot of speed bumps, so to speak. Okay. So the, uh, the areas above the shared use path there, we were just talking about, um, those, those lines indicate um, elevation in that area? That's correct. We're adding some fill behind the berm to raise the elevation to basically be the same height as that berm uh, so that folks can have, that are sitting in the park space, can have the same sort of vantage point that those that have that are sitting on the chairs that are out there today on the berm. 
Um, so uh, there, that place in that location, there will be some fill added, obviously. Um, you know, and we have talked about in the future, um, you know, resiliency and, and what this means with the central waterfront, similar to what, you know, has been discussed for Waterfront West and other areas. Um, and we've tried to incorporate as best we can raising this park space without in the interim decades having um, an extremely um, disparate situation out there in terms of grading or accessibility, um, you know, in the coming decades. So. Okay. Thanks. There's are, there's constant flood, well, not constant, but there's flooding whenever there's a storm down by the Summers V Sculpture Plaza. Is anything going to be done about that, or is that not considered the city land because it's more along with like that the ramp area next to it? Uh, well, I don't know, Steve, I don't know if you can address a little bit. That area is not changing in terms of its overall height. Uh, it does. It is waterfront trust uh, control. So we're coordinating with the waterfront trust, the improvements for both the sculpture park and the uh, connection with the uh, boardwalk there. We're also, um, for the interim time anyway, uh, bringing a, a nice conclusion to the path, the shared use path and the bike trail there. Um, you know, obviously that'll help to integrate further with whatever happens in Waterfront West, um, you know, beyond the, the point that we end at the sculpture park, but we're not planning to raise the grade there, uh, so to speak. Uh, I don't know if Steve, if there's any, I don't think there's any um, particular stormwater management we're able to do in that area. I know we're capturing as much as we yeah. can uphill, but. Yeah, there will be some new catch spaces uphill, as you mentioned, um, to help intercept flow. I think as far as coastal flooding, I don't think it'll make a lot of difference at this point since the, the ramp will remain as it is and the, the grades will remain the same as you mentioned. So there'll be a little less sheet flow coming down the hill towards that spot, but we just can't mitigate the rivers, uh, you know, sort of flooding or sea rise, so to speak, in that, in that way. Anybody else? No, I look forward to the uh, to the NOI submission. It'll be that'll be interesting. Um, but. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time tonight, too. I mean, even even informal feedback is helpful. Um, you'll see, obviously, more detailed plans and, and whatnot in here. But um, we want to just kind of make sure you had an idea what was coming along and you could tell us if there's any areas you wanted us to flush out any any further. OK, um, yeah, if, if uh, I would say if anybody's got any further questions to submit them to uh, Julie and Andy. And, uh, I just make make one comment, you know, regarding Carol's question that seems like an opportunity lost to not do something down there by the sculpture plaza because that does currently flood and it's only going to get worse and if we don't do something yeah i mean one thing that has been discussed is um you know, the fact that that area is not taken into account by the bulkhead project so whether or not there's some sort of further extension or activity that takes place there um, but i think generally speaking it's been perceived as a project that might be an extension of the bulkhead side of things as opposed to the park side of things um we can i can revisit that with jordy uh vining tomorrow uh, and Sasaki, as well as um, GEI, the firm that is working with Jordy on the bulkhead project um, to see if, you know, what else, if anything, could be done down in that area as part of either project now. Um, I know part of it comes down to funding constraints and some of it comes down to um, the area being under separate, technically separate uh, control, but, um, but we can certainly circle back on that point. Does, does the city own that uh, boat ramp there? Uh, it's under the control of the Waterfront Trust. The, uh, oh, it is, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Then, yeah, I guess so. Uh, we need to discuss with them since that's where a lot of the water comes in. When the, I mean, when that the, whole parking lot area usually floods it as in the sculpture area, too. So it seems kind of. Okay. Yeah, and we and that's why we had talked about raising the boardwalk itself. We're we're fully aware that we might need to raise the bulk of the uh, boardwalk itself in the future. And so we actually walked through with the structural engineer. Uh, while talking about raising the bulkhead wall, which was uh, raised by the resiliency folks as well. Um, the idea of raising the boardwalk and um, he's looked at that and believes that we can just work off of the structure that's there. Obviously this is what the assumption that can, the city continues to protect that infrastructure with the you know new FRP panels and concrete protection for the, the boardwalk and the bulkhead wall that's there today. Um, but we would basically just use the structure that's there, um, place new decking. Uh, we would replace any uh, down to the um, down to the concrete or um, steel, you know, rebar sort of come, uh, bolts and things that are coming out of there. We would just work down there to anything that might have rotted out and, and just work our way back up um, to uh, to go higher, essentially, with the boardwalk at some point down the road, um, assuming silver rise follows the trajectory that we've seen projected. 
Okay. But, but isn't it the boat ramp that's the issue? Um, I mean, the low point of, of all of this? That it, is the issue? it is mostly, yeah. How but, functional is that boat ramp? I, I can't speak to that, unfortunately. I, I'd have to defer to the harbor master uh, or someone in, in his capacity about how frequently it's used and for what. Um, sorry, I can't answer that question, but I, I know it's not quite heavily, not as heavily used, let's say, right? So <laughs> well, it's not a prim primary point. So. It is all full of kayaks in this photo, but uh, yeah, sorry, I, I didn't mean to dismiss kayaks. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm thinking larger. <laughs> no, I'm just right. It's, I'm uh, just saying. I just saw all those kayaks yeah. sitting there, and um, I, I've rarely seen somebody going in and out of there. But I don't know if other people have seen it more. But it just yeah, seems another place you can put the kayaks. Also. It, it, it's a big hole in the dam for it. What I yeah. say. So, all right. No, food for thought. Um, we have anything else? And I'll set with Sasaki. I uh, just want to thank everybody from Sasaki and thank the commission for your time tonight. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank um, you. I know one other thing that's not on here that we need to do that was mentioned kind of in passing is the, uh, we need a member since Paul is uh, retired, uh, we need a member for the community preservation committee. Um, is there anybody interested in serving on the CPC? And if anybody needs me to speak to what the commission does or how frequently it meets, just let me know. I'm happy to elaborate on that. Oh, you can say that right now. Do it right now. Yeah, you uh, you you don't have to attend um, at quite as many meetings as the, the Conservation Commission. That's a regular, <laughs> you know, twice a monthly because of all the permits that are happening around the city in various areas. Um, the CPC, although it's uh, certainly nice to be able to attend every monthly meeting, um, most important is the um, they do have a, a required public hearing at the end of the year to get feedback from the community. Um, but most importantly, in the spring, um, basically March, April timeframe, um, once yearly looking at applications for CPA funding, they're typically run, recommended once a year on a regular grant cycle. Um, all the local surcharge uh, and the state matching funds that are set aside for CPA purposes which are historic preservation, open space and recreation uh, and affordable housing um, that, um, that the, C the preservation committee provides a, an advisory recommendation to the city council. The city council then decides whether or not to appropriate the funds uh, in accordance with that recommendation. Um, and typically, you know, most projects will typically be approved uh, um, in the order of business, um, but the CPC has to provide that recommendation um, relative to any of the grants that come in. Sometimes they're recommended for less funding or no funding, sometimes they're withdrawn. Um, so you meet a couple of times a year, really important time frame in the spring and then later the rest of the year. Um, but uh, and every once in a while, there's an application out of cycle. OK. Um, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but if uh, if someone has any interest, um, why don't. Uh, when you think about it, maybe next meeting we can uh, we can vote on who we want to uh, represent us. Okay. I mean, we have we 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 have a spot specifically yes. for somebody from this commission. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, know the that. conservation commission because there's an open space uh, component to it. The conservation commission has a a seat. That's what Paul Paul was doing that for years. Well, uh -huh. ever since the beginning of the CPC. Not quite thirty six years. Not quite thirty six years now. <laughs> So uh, why don't you think about it and we'll, we'll uh, figure it out at our next meeting. I'll just let it be known that I'm already on two boards and I'm not going to be on a third. You could have just said no, Steve. <laughs> and, uh, you know, again, for another plug for it, very few meetings uh, in a year and you get to recommend funding, which is a nice thing to be able to do. So, mm -hmm. but again, not, not as urgent if you want to, you know, look at that at the next meeting, we, I think next spring would be the time frame which we'd really want to make sure, as the chair mentioned, we have some sort of representation from the commission. Yeah. All right, we'll, uh, we'll discuss that next time. Uh, do we have any, uh, anything further this evening? Have I forgotten anything else? Uh, nothing from the office, unless you have any questions. Okay, all right. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Carol, let him finish his motion. <laughs> <laughs> I did. He said he, he made the motion. Um, all right. Roll call. Steve Moore. 
Yes. Uh, David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Charlie Lovacetti. Yes. And I vote yes. Welcome, Charlie. Yeah. I'll try to be less confusing next time. Thank you. Have a good night, folks. All right. Good night. Good night, everyone. Very good. Take care.